Well, welcome back, and uh, we're going to move out of access control and classification schemes and now move into uh, looking at security architecture models. And uh, during this particular video, we're going to go back and look at the granddaddy of all models, the Trusted Computer System Evaluation Criteria. Uh, what, what an ugly name, but, but that's the grandfather or, or granddaddy of them all. So let's start with uh, defining what a security architecture model is, and then we'll uh, move in and start looking at uh, the uh, Rainbow series, and then talking a little bit about what a reference monitor uh, is and a covert channel. So that's what you should get out of this particular video. So uh, definition security architecture model, it's, it's a, a model that helps the organization make improvements through adaptations. The idea is give you a holistic model of looking at your uh, computing base and then how do we harden the entire thing. Make sure you don't miss anything. You're looking at hardware and software. Uh, some of the models are going to be uh, via policy. Some of the models are going to be via uh, technology. Uh, some are going to focus on confidentiality or integrity. Others are not. And so as you're going through this, this idea is to give you a model, this kind of uh, conceptual framework that solves a component uh, of your problem. So let's uh, start off and uh, look at the Rainbow Series as it's affectionately known or the Trusted Computer System Evaluation Criteria. So this came out, uh, well at least the first time I saw it was the early 80s. Each of the books in the series has a different color and the orange book was considered the cornerstone of it and thus it was called the Rainbow Series. Not too many people called it the Trusted Computer System. Uh, evaluation criteria for obvious reasons. It just doesn't roll off, you know, the tongue. TC sec. Um, and the idea behind this was to look at the, and, and try to construct a trusted computing base. So what's in a trusted computing base? The idea was let's look at all hardware, all firmware, all software, and make sure that they're working together to enforce a security policy. So it's a really a kind of a holistic look. Uh, and, and what you would have is you would just have certain computer hardware that was authorized to meet this standard and certain software that was authorized within this standard. Uh, and otherwise you couldn't add or delete from it because you could compromise uh, the entire system. And there were two kind of important concepts that came out of this, um, one of which is this idea of a reference monitor. And so the reference monitor, uh, the idea is we're going to have one part of the system that we're going to harden and that one part of the system is going to uh, mediate all access to uh, the software or hardware or firmware on that particular computer system by the users. And so you've got this one, if, if you will, a trusted agent uh, that, that is doing that control. Well, conceptually it sounds wonderful. Uh, practically, it's really hard to implement, to have one component that can do that and not be uh, compromised and still provide uh, adequate user uh, performance and, and the satisfaction. Um, the other thing that came out of this was the idea of a, a covert channel. And this is an unauthorized or perhaps more importantly the word is unintended method of communications hidden inside the computer. And so perhaps you've seen some of the YouTube videos where people uh, use their com computer and accessing the hard drive to, to, to play a song. Well, that, that's an idea of a covert channel. You're actually taking something, the hard disk access, and you're using that to convey a different message or to hide a different message. Uh, another good example uh, that was popular just a couple of years ago was called uh, stenography. And stenography involved hiding messages inside uh, pictures. And so what you would do is you'd see a picture, for example, of Texas A&M uh, Stadium and uh, what you didn't know is some of the pixels in this very large pixer, picture had been uh, altered and there was an algorithm to altering it so as to convey a text message. So there was a text message hidden in the picture and, and you know if you're looking you see an email, you see an attachment of a picture, uh, nothing suspicious, it's at Texas A&M, nothing suspicious. Uh, but if you've got the right software, you can actually pull a text message out of the picture. So that's the idea behind a, a, a covert uh, channel. Um, again, there are some uh, examples here in terms of storage uh, or in terms of timing, certain timing events. Uh, it actually goes back a while. Um, uh, again, when this policy was being developed, 
uh, uh, different keys on the keyboard or on a typewriter had a different sound associated with them. Um, and uh, people actually built uh, listening devices and could tell what was being typed, not by seeing the piece of paper, but by listening to the sound that the typewriter uh, provided. That's an example of a, a covert channel. All right, well, good. We've uh, talked about the granddaddy of all standards, the rainbow uh, uh, standard. And what we're going to do now is move into some uh, a, a, a legacy. I don't want to say legacy, but some of those foundational models. And the first one we're going to look at is the uh, Bell confidentiality model. So that'll be in the next video. Look forward to seeing you there.